So many winners coming out of the LSU football game on Saturday and the weekend filled with football. I have Jamal Adams as a weekend winner, but I want to start in Tuscaloosa. And nobody, nobody won more this weekend probably in the sport than Clyde Edwards-Hilaire did. He's a draft-eligible junior right out of Baton Rouge. And the amount of money he made himself on Saturday by proving to the NFL scouts, executives that were on hand there. By the way, all 32 teams were represented at that game on Saturday. A couple of general managers, a couple of guys that make decisions. Probably had, like, yeah. But Clyde Edwards-Alaire, on a field that had upwards of 40 multimillionaires over the next five years... Clyde probably made the most money out of any of them by what he accomplished on Saturday. Clyde Edwards-Alaire, salute to you, our top weekend winner here on Off the Bench. Salute, Clyde. Um, my weekend winner. Um, I don't know. Uh, just to all of LSU, every one of you, every single LSU fan out there, every single member of the LSU hive mind that waited so long for this day, like I kept saying last week, right? Um... The last time LSU had beaten Alabama, I was on the team. I'm now 30 years old and expecting my second child. (laughs) It was a long wait. And yet, the drought is finally over. It was all worth it. We are all winners. And you know who else is a winner? The Swamp King. Shout out to the King. The Crimson Emperor is in full retreat. Nikki? So Rivers left us a few uh, for her weekend winners. First of all is PJ Fleck. Yep. Good for P.J. Fleck in Minnesota, being ranked 17 by the College Football Playoff Committee and turning around and rowing their boat to a 31-26 victory over Penn State. She says she feels like P.J. might be a little bit of a crazy person, always speaking in motivational hashtags, but she loves him and his crowd surf as he entered the locker room. couple things to point out here. P.J. is a crazy person. There's no two ways around that, but a lot of football coaches are crazy. Yeah. And I think that P.J.'s got a pretty good college football team. Also, what is scary here, and I think you brought this up, and I think you're yeah, about yeah, to say yeah. it, so don't let me steal it. Go ahead. Well, it, here's my deal, okay? There's going to be a lot of talk about the eyeball test mm-hmm. here in the next few weeks, okay? Mm-hmm. And and we, we, we I don't want to have the conversation today because today I want to be all about celebrating the accomplishment, but we'll, we'll have the talk of playoff and does Alabama get back in, et cetera, et cetera. Here's the deal, though. If somebody's going to try to sell me that the college football playoff committee, that I should trust their eyeballs, how can I trust their eyeballs after they put an undefeated Minnesota team at 17, completely ignoring their resume, solely because in their subjective view, they were the 17th team in the country. They put Penn State at four. Okay, how can we trust those eyeballs? A major hit to the eyeball test. Also on Fleck, row the boat is an unreal piece of marketing. I know nothing else about Fleck. We all know nothing. Nobody in the country knows anything else about Fleck. And yet, when that game ended Saturday, all of my Twitter feed was filled up was row the boat, row the so, boat, row the boat, row the boat. So just the, in a constant stream. I, I saw a piece on game day for the first time on Fleck in Minnesota. You know the entrance way to the, the, the football ops yeah. for everybody? It's usually got these motivational pictures, bowl wins, yeah. where you've been, some types of accomplishments of the program. He's got oars. <laughs> along the wall <laughs> of, of highlighted it. moments for the for, yeah, for the program. Uh, it's Nick, crazy. No, no, I'm giving it to uh, to Minnesota as well. I found myself this weekend watching this game with yep. a group Bro, of Penn yeah. Staters, diehard Penn Staters, one of which ended up crying. I'm very sorry, yes. man. It was a sad, oh, nice. it was a bad loss. Nice. But it was fun. No, to those cap- are always the tears that you come to regret later. No, I cried it, after losses, and you feel like a loser. It later. then it then capped. <laughs> it capped <laughs> right when crying. that game ended. I was watching the LSU game. They were still there, and they were watching a guy that doesn't really care about football <laughs> celebrate the you know the <laughs> team that I live by is like. Number one in the country right now. They're like, screw you, man. Could there be a worse character in the world to watch your team or watch a college football game with when your team just got beat the Nathan, the Nathan. when <laughs> his team is being successful when he really doesn't even he have doesn't a team. even care. He's you know like, like, I love court. I guess Oregon. I'll cheer for the purple and gold team. Oregon. <laughs> He's like, oh man, that was a tough loss y'all had in Minnesota. My, huh? uh, my next winner is the Miami Heat. Everybody oh, wow, okay. but Deion Waiters. Ah, yeah. I think Dion Waiters' teammates have gotten some great content to tease Waiters on here. Check this out. Last Thursday, Waiters took a uh, took a gummy, took an edible, uh, an edible from a uh, from a teammate. Uh, as this story was reported yesterday, Mark Stein of the New York Times, the uh, the teammate will not fess up. They still do not have a name on the teammate that gave 
waiters the edible, but as they were taking the chartered flight from Miami off to a West Coast trip, waiters had a panic attack <sighs> on the flight. Too stoned. 30,000 nah. feet up. Damn. Told the, st- uh, told the pilot, we got to turn this thing around, man. We've all been there. I got to get back. I got to get back home. I can't do this anymore. Turn the plane around. They flip the plane around, go back to Miami, drop waiters off. He's now suspended 10 days contract, uh, conduct detrimental to the team. Yeah. As uh, waiters issued a statement from the Miami Heat just saying that they were very embarrassed. It's, uh, you know, nobody's more embarrassed than him. Um, just keep it together. Keep it together, just man. Maintain, That's the bottom bro. line. Dude. You got to maintain. maintain. Talk dude. to a friend. It happens. You just have to constantly remind yourself, like no one's ever died from marijuana. You got to. You, know, you know the nameless teammate that still is anonymous at this point. At that time, over as they're up in the air, and he's freaking out. He's like, bro, bro, get it bro. together. Go in you the bathroom. You have got to chill out. Stare in the mirror. Just take some Nyquil. Pass Here's out. Here's some water. Here's some gum. Chew this. I mean, Get I'm, it together, I'm man. shocked, though. Team Doctor couldn't slip him like an Ambien yeah. or something, like or like Knock a, like a Xanax. Like, just Knock get him get him under control. Either way, waiters, um, get it together, man. Uh, my weekend winner, same way Willie Taggart was. Let's just add Chad Morris to the list. <laughs> Chad Morris, um, man. Man, what a job being getting a major college football coaching gig must be. Uh, because it doesn't matter if you're – you have to be good enough to get the job, okay? And that that is hard. Like what Chad Morris did at SMU is impressive. You have to be good enough to get the job. But once you get it, you're paid. It don't matter. You can be terrible. You can have Chad Morris's record and win, what, like four games or whatever it was in two years ago, winless in the SEC, and yet my man is still going to be getting paid $10 million dollars through 2023 not to work. We wow. talked about athletes that were getting paid. Justin Verlander fits this, this mold as good as anybody who's gotten so much, hundreds of millions of dollars to be a top performer. And just when he gets to the top area of his his trade to the World Series, he's 0 for 6. This is where I would have no problem spending all this money if I'm Chad Morris. For Arkansas to give up on Morris at this point, I know it looks terrible and that he's winless in the SEC, but he told you on the press conference, he told you during the interview process, I've got to rebuild the entire roster because yep. what I want to do and what Brett Bielema has been doing is complete and polar opposites. So the guys on the roster don't fit, uh, don't fit what I want to do. So a year and a half in, you fired him. Now Arkansas is in no man's land. I, I agree. No I land. agree, but at the same time, Morris needed to give you a spark. Yeah, he needed. I, yep, he needed yep, to yep. give you anything. Like, I because of what you just said, it would have to be exceptionally bad to move on. And unfortunately, that's what it was. It was exceptionally bad. And so, yeah, no hope for it. Look, Arkansas, you got more money than God. Like, you got more billionaires in your alumni they base better. than anybody. Like, at a certain point, if They're you want to be, a, yeah, you just you just gotta. I, I, you got to go try to just make some sort of splashy, huge money higher. So Sean Payton did not have a huge win on the field, obviously, on Sunday. But we're not going to talk about that. We're going to talk about his huge win off the field. He got engaged to his longtime girlfriend, Skylene Montgomery, at a private party at Longway Tavern on Friday night. Yeah. Apparently, she thought the event was for an anniversary of Saints owner Gail Benson and her late husband, Tom. But surprise, your girl got ringed up. I mean... Sean, bro, the bye week was last week. Oh, it was a Friday. I, mean, <laughs> I hate to think everybody just partied so right. hard at the engagement party. It's like, well, yeah. uh, T-Bob, yeah. listening, yeah. listening to the cannon on the post game. Oh, God. His thought was, maybe you got to do that in the off season. <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course. I mean, hey, he's Coach probably Payton, going off. I mean, it's week nine. He was so fired up uh, no, Saturday little, night, the cannon was. A little off sports here for a second. There's been some bad press about this, but the new airport, the new New Orleans airport, I flew in last night. 11 30 i know there might be some kinks in if we worked out but in terms of greeting people that are visiting the city coming into new orleans that thing is it's beautiful it is so beautiful so you didn't have to deal with like the hour-long wait for an uber that cost you a hundred dollars okay see that that's the thing i got in at 11 30 so like it was empty yeah. like i yeah, got to walk sense. around the whole place check it out there were no lines nothing like that so we'll see i'm sure there's some stuff that needs to be they worked can out. figured it out they can figure it out but that's good to hear that it looks nice those are your sure. weekend winners here on off the bench ross dellinger was in tuscaloosa we'll talk to delhi next from si.com as we'll get more reaction lsu bama next year on off the bench